If for some odd reason you didn't already know, we have possibly the most popular race in motorsports this weekend, the Indianapolis 500. The Indy 500 is a huge event. It's the 108th running. And now let's preview it right here on my channel. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where today I'm talking the Indianapolis 500. Also let me know what you think of this video. Who do you think is going to win the Indianapolis 500? If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Alright, so this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to preview the Indianapolis 500. I'm going to go through the starting lineup, name some favorites, pick my winner of the Indianapolis 500, then I'll give you my final thoughts on the event. But before we start the starting lineup, I have to say this, there is a good chance that we're going to get some rain affecting this event, whether it's ending the race early, pushing it to Monday. There's definitely a chance that this race could go without any rain. But the way the forecast is looking, there is a good chance we will get some rain affecting, once again, the Indianapolis 500. All right, so let's start in row 11 in the 33rd starting position. You have my favorite driver, Graham Rahal. It's been a very tough week for Graham Rahal. Once again, he was in the bottom four, having to sweat it out. This time, he was luckily able to make it in on his own. In the middle of row 11, you have Marcus Erickson, who won the Indianapolis 500 just two years ago, finished second last year, and honestly has had the most difficult and drama-filled week out of everybody in the field, I would say. Then you have Catherine Legg being the one driver making it to the Indianapolis 500 from Dale Coyne Racing. Once again, was in the bottom four in qualifying. Has not had very good luck in this event. We'll see if she's able to turn it around this year in the Indy 500. Now we're in row 10, starting on the outside in the 30th position. This is a legendary name, Pietro Fittipaldi for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. Looking to get a good finish, has been struggling throughout the week. Been very difficult for him to find speed in that machine. In the middle of row 10, you have the hometown favorite of Connor Daly looking to win it for Indiana. Always seems to be really strong in the Indy 500. Has had a very difficult week but he has shown confidence that he has a fast race car when it comes to Sunday. And then on the inside, you have Fittipaldi's teammate of Christian Lungard, who's also had a really difficult time. It's pretty much the exact same story for him. Has been unable to find speed the whole week. Been very difficult for Lungard. On the outside of row number nine, he is an Indianapolis 500 rookie. You have Linus Lundquist for Ganassi. Had an accident earlier on in the week. Overall, it's been a pretty difficult week for Ganassi as a whole. Then you have Romain Grosjean in the middle of row number nine. He's had an extremely difficult week. I expect him to be one of the back markers in this event. No offense to Grosjean. Then making his first Indianapolis 500 start, also his first oval start, you have Tom Blunquist for Meyer Shank Racing. Meyer Shank is a big time sleeper team this year. There's a couple other drivers from the team that we still have to get to. On to row number eight, and we're on to another Indianapolis 500 rookie, and I'm really excited to see this driver race. He's been really aggressive throughout the week, honestly making a couple of drivers pretty upset, and that is Christian Rasmussen for Ed Carpenter Racing. I'm very excited to see what he can do, and he could potentially be the Indianapolis 500 rookie of the year. Then in the middle of row number eight, you have the coolest name in motorsports, and that is Stingray Rob for AJ Foyt Racing. Interested to see what he can do. Has not shown a lot of speed. I do really like Stingray. Then on the inside, you have Augustine Canapino. Potentially could have gotten a lot better qualifying run if it wasn't because of that Planum event. But the Argentine driver has been sneaky fast all week, and I would consider him a huge underdog to potentially steal the win in the Indianapolis 500. Now on to row number seven. I would consider row number seven to be the row of experience. Starting on the outside, you have one of the best drivers in IndyCar history, still searching for that second Indianapolis 500 victory, and that is Australian Scott Dixon. 
Then in the middle, you have Elio Castroneves searching for that drive for five to get that fifth Indianapolis 500 victory for Meyer Shank Racing. He seems really confident in his speed in the Indianapolis 500. And then you have Marco Andretti, who's been dipping his toes into stock car stuff, returning to the IndyCar for the Indianapolis 500. And the reports and all the talk has been how comfortable he's been in the car and how happy he's been with the car this week. Marco, known to be a driver that's not usually too happy with his equipment. He seems really confident in what he has. I would look out for him potentially getting a good finish, maybe even competing for the win in the Indy 500. Then starting in the 18th position on the outside of row number six, it's the first driver to start the Indianapolis 500 from Barbados, and that is Kiffin Simpson for Ganassi. Kiffin Simpson, along with pretty much all of Ganassi racing, has been pretty quiet the month of May, but they did show a little bit of speed on carb day. Then in the middle of row number six, I think it's the driver everybody would be super pumped and excited to see win the race, and that is Ed Carpenter in the number 20 for his own race team. Ed has shown so much speed at the Speedway for many years, and he's been very close to winning this race on multiple occasions. Can this week be the time that he gets it? Then on the inside of row number six, you have another Ganassi Indianapolis 500 rookie from New Zealand, this one being Marcus Armstrong. It's kind of been the same story for Armstrong as it's been for Simpson and pretty much all of Ganassi racing. It's been a pretty quiet month. But here on Carb Day, they began to show a little bit more speed. And I'm interested to see how they can do on Sunday or potentially even Monday. Now we're on to row number five. And I think this is when we really get into the big contenders for the win. Starting with Errol McLaren's Callum Eilat. I think this guy has been completely under the radar. Mainly because of how strong his teammates are doing. I think he's doing pretty much just as well as his teammates a little inexperienced in the car and with oval racing very interested to see what he can do in the indianapolis 500. then in the middle you have alex Pelot, who's been one of the most dominating drivers in indycar over the last couple of seasons but he has yet to win the indianapolis 500 is this year his year and then on the inside of row number five i think a lot of people are circling this driver as one of their favorites for the indianapolis 500 from andretti global it is Colton Herta. Colton Herta has shown so much speed in traffic, has been making a lot of fantastic passes in the practices during this week. Is that ability to pass and that speed in traffic enough to lead and win the Indy 500? Then on the outside of row number four, I think it's been one of the pleasant surprises so far in the month of May, and that is Ryan Hunter Ray looking to win his second Indianapolis 500. Then in the middle of row number four, I think you have another driver that's really been slipping under the radar, and that is Kyle Kirkwood. He has a bunch of speed for Andretti. I could potentially see him battling for the win late. Then there's a driver you can never count out of the Indianapolis 500. He's a two-time champion, and that is Takuma Sato. Sato is the fastest driver at Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan in the Indianapolis 500 has shown a lot of speed, and he really badly wants to join that exclusive club of drivers that have won the event three times. Now we're on to row number three, starting on the outside of row number three in the ninth position from Sweden. You have Felix Rosenquist. Rosenquist has been really fast for Meyer Shank Racing the month of May, has potentially been the quickest Honda for the month of May, if you'd ask some people. Rosenquist has looked really fast in the 500 before, can he get the job done this year? And then in the middle of row number three, I think you have the driver that could potentially be the most hungry to win the event, and that is Pato Award. The Aero McLaren driver has been very close to winning this race a couple of times with the best finish of second. Can he get the job done this time for Aero McLaren? Then we're on to the inside of row number three. One of the biggest stories of the weekend for qualifying, and that was Renus VK able to last second lock himself into the fast 12 last weekend and now he's looking to carry that into the indianapolis 500 now we're on to row number two starting with the outside in the sixth position you have santino ferrucci for aj foyt racing ferrucci seems to be an extremely talented race car driver especially at indianapolis motor speedway but a very disappointing thing happened during carb day he was really slow during carb day actually went 
to the garage during the practice to make changes. Hopefully he'll be strong and competitive and compete for the win because he is a really fast driver at Indianapolis. And that number 14 AJ Foyt car was flying and it'd be great to see that car competing for the win. In the middle of row number two, you have the talk of the town. You have young money Kyle Larson for Arrow McLaren. One of the big stories heading into this weekend is the potential rain out. If we get a rain delay for the Indianapolis 500, there is a chance that Kyle Larson will have to jump ship and go to Charlotte for the Coca-Cola 600. And then this spot could potentially be taken over by Tony Kanaan, who is still looking for that first Indianapolis 500. But if Kyle Larson does race the event, he's shown a lot of speed, very surprising throughout the month. One thing he hasn't done pretty much all month, though, is race in traffic and see how his car is able to make passes until Carb Day. Carb Day has shown a lot of speed in the number 17 and impressed a lot of people, actually. And he is one of the favorites to win the Indianapolis 500 and actually has the potential of winning the Indy 500 and the Coke 600 in the same day. And then on the inside of row number two, you have Alexander Rossi looking to win his second Indianapolis 500. Of course, he won that very first one in his rookie year on fuel mileage. But he has been the big competitor on upfront speed when it comes to the Penske drivers because Penske has been lights out all month long. But Rossi has been their big contender. And a lot of people are circling him as the winner of the Indianapolis 500 for the second time. Now we're on to the front row, row number one. Team Penske swept the front row the first time since 1988 and only the second time in Indianapolis 500 history. Both times were by Team Penske. Penske, like I said, have been lights out all month. These three drivers have been incredibly fast. Let's start with Joseph Newgarden, last year's Indianapolis 500 champion, starting in the third spot. Joseph Newgarden's car I think is a little interesting. I think these three cars are the best cars in the field but i think some of these cars are better in traffic and then some of these are better at top speed and i would consider new garden to be second in both of those categories if we're talking about just these three drivers i would say scotty mack is a little faster when it comes to top speed and then will powers car really gets through traffic well while joseph new garden scotty mack seem to struggle in traffic a little bit on to second, we go to Will Power, and I think most people at this point are circling Will Power to win his second Indianapolis 500. Of course, he won the first one in 2018. Will Power is also on a long winless streak, the longest winless streak of his career, and it would be a wonderful moment for him to end that winless streak and get the Indianapolis 500. Like I mentioned, Will Power has been really fast in traffic. He also shows a lot of top speed. He'd be really great out front leading the race as well and now we're on to the pole sitter scott mclaughlin scotty mack i really love this guy's attitude he shows a lot of speed he's been really quick all month of may really quick the last week ended up stealing the pole from his teammate will power last second that was pretty awesome to see especially since he's driving the rick mears paint scheme that's pretty great especially since rick mears was a part of that front row in 1988. But like I mentioned when I was talking about Joseph Newgarden, Scotty Mack has so much speed, but when he's in traffic, he seems to struggle as most Indy cars seem to struggle, but some seem to be better than others in traffic. But Scotty Mack, along with all of Team Penske, is going to be a huge threat to win the Indianapolis 500. All right, now that we've gotten through the starting grid, we're going to go through some favorites real quick, starting with Team Penske. Team Penske are in a very interesting scenario and situation. They could potentially lead the entire race by doing a certain strategy. We've seen the strategy done before at ovals, especially at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where teammates will be at the front and they will switch positions. A driver will lead a little bit, then he'll go to the back of the line. Then the next driver will lead for a little bit, go back to the back of the line. And this is a way for them to hold the lead, but at the same time, they're able to save enough fuel to do their certain strategies. Indianapolis 500 tends to be a fuel mileage race. It tends to be really drawn out and all about strategy. We'll have to see how the event goes because there is the potential of rain along with a lot of other factors. These drivers have been very aggressive the month of May and it's been in my opinion the most competitive Indy 500 I've ever seen. Usually going into the Indy 500, I think there's like a handful of drivers that could potentially win the race. 
There's a handful of drivers that could potentially run top 10, and then there's just the rest. This year, I think pretty much any, I could see anybody finishing in the top 10. I think there's only maybe three or four drivers I couldn't see finishing in the top 10 this weekend. So a very competitive field. So let's continue to go through the favorites as now we get to Colton Herta. Colton Herta has not shown a lot of speed when he's out front in clean air compared to the Penske drivers, even compared to the Aero McLaren drivers. But in my opinion, there's been no driver faster in traffic than Colton Herta. There's also no driver that's been better at passing than Colton Herta. Colton Herta is a very talented race car driver, and he's going to do what he needs to do to win this race. He's going to be driving the wheels off that thing all race long. And if he gets to the lead, I don't see him letting go. All right, let's talk about Aero McLaren. Let's start with Kyle Larson when it comes to Aero McLaren. Kyle Larson, first of all, like I mentioned earlier, there is a potential that he might not even be able to race the Indianapolis 500 if we get rain. But if he is able to race, he has done phenomenal all month. I was a little bit worried about him running in the pack up until carb day. They finally threw him in the pack in traffic and he did a phenomenal job, made a bunch of great passes. Looked like he was able to handle the car properly. I was really impressed with his performance on carb day and the whole month of May. I think one of the big things for him is going to be pit road, pit stops. If he can nail that down, I think he has a great potential of winning the Indianapolis 500. Now we'll look at Alexander Rossi. Rossi has been the big challenger for Penske this month. He's shown so much speed and he's just so great at Indianapolis. He's one of those drivers that always seems to show out when we come to Indy. I think there's a handful of drivers, no matter what the situation, the scenario, the race team, they come out and they perform at Indianapolis. And watching all the interviews this week, I still think the interview that shown me the driver that wants this more than everyone is that interview after qualifying. He was really upset, really determined to upset Penske because Penske had been talking all month and he just, he kind of wants bragging rights more than anything it sounds like to me. He is really excited and he is really determined to win this race. Then we got Pato Award and Award, he's probably the most popular driver in the sport. He's so charismatic. He's a great guy. He's, he gives great interviews. He's a phenomenal race car driver and he's been so close to winning this event on multiple occasions. I think a lot of fans would really love to see him win this event. I think he's lagged behind his two teammates a little bit. I think he's pretty much on the same level as Ilot. But he's very determined and he's going to do everything he can to win the race. And I could see him being one of those drivers that pulls some sort of crazy fuel strategy to win the event. Now we're on to the underdogs. And I have a couple underdogs for you, starting with that last Aero McLaren driver is Callum Eilat. This driver, Eilat, he has pretty much no experience on ovals. This is kind of his big experience this weekend, the Indianapolis 500. And he's shown so much speed. I don't think he's been as fast as Larson or Rossi, but he's been on the same level as Award. If you put Eilat in the right situation... And he gets some experience out there on the racetrack, which he has been doing. He's been getting better constantly. I think he's a big threat for the win, especially if he gets the lead. It's going to be really hard to pass that Errol McLaren machine. My next big underdog is Augustine Canapino. He has shown a bunch of speed. He's been really flying under the radar. I can see him having a great performance. Honestly, should have had a way better qualifying effort as he did. But he got really bad luck in qualifying qualifying with that Planum event. And then the last underdog I have to say is Connor Daly. Connor Daly has not shown a bunch of speed, but he seemed extremely confident with the car he has. And he always comes to Indianapolis 500 and seems to impress. Even if the expectations are high or low, he always seems to exceed whatever expectations he has. Now after going over the favorites and the underdogs... I'm going to make my pick for the Indianapolis 500, and I'm going to make my underdog pick for the Indianapolis 500. Honestly, I have a very bad feeling that the Penske strategy is going to fall apart, whether that means a bad pit stop or one of the drivers wrecking. I really think the Penske strategy is going to fall apart. And if the Penske strategy falls apart and these drivers get into traffic, they're going to have a difficult time. They haven't been the greatest in traffic I would consider the Andretti, even the Ganassi cars, better in traffic. Even Meyer Shank, I would say, is possibly better than better in traffic than these drivers. 
But the driver that has been the best in traffic this week has been Colton Herta. And Herta, he's been doing really well in the IndyCar series for years. He's been close to winning the event, has shown a lot of speed in the event. And I think he gets it done for the first time this year. I think the driver, the number 26 for Andretti Global, Colton Herta, wins his first Indianapolis 500 in the 108th running. And I don't think he's going to win it by strategy either. I think strategy could maybe play into it, but I think he's going to win this race on pure speed. He's in a very fast car for the Indianapolis 500. He's not as fast as the Penske cars when it comes to top speed and clean air. But when it comes to in traffic, he's just so fast in traffic. He's been able to make passes that I haven't seen other drivers able to make. He's making passes that I haven't really seen any other drivers making. But yeah, I think Colton Herta brings the Indianapolis 500 championship back to Andretti. And some very quick final thoughts before I send you on, on your way. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. It could be a pretty long video. It might be a 20, 25 minute video. It could be shorter. Hopefully it's shorter. Rain could potentially play a big factor into this race. This race could get moved to Monday. It could get delayed. It could get shortened. And could also have a driver change in order. If the rain comes at a certain time, Kyle Larson won't be able to race the event, potentially, and Tony Kanaan will actually jump back into the car and race the event. Like I mentioned a couple of times, Team Penske is going to have a certain strategy in order to hold on to that lead and save fuel at the same time for their fuel and pit strategy. So you're going to be seeing drivers and teams all race long trying to break up those three, unless they're able to do it early. That would be really great if they're able to do it early in those first couple of laps. I know Alexander Rossi is going to be pushing really hard to do that. Which brings me to my next point is fuel strategy. Fuel strategy always seems to play a big factor into the Indianapolis 500. We've had multiple drivers win the Indy 500 on just saving enough fuel and pitting at the right time. So if you want to put 50 cents or a dollar on some of these back marker drivers that you don't expect to compete for the win they could still win the race on fuel strategy and pending the right circumstances i really hope this is a fantastic race the indy 500 is always very entertaining but i'm also hoping that we don't either get we either get zero rain drops or it gets moved to monday because i would really love to see kyle larson at least attempt the indianapolis 500 and see what he's able to do in the big race but let me know your thoughts below. Who do you think is going to win the Indianapolis 500? Do you think we're going to get rain? Do you think it's going to get moved to Monday? Do you think it's going to get rain shortened? Do you think it could be delayed? Let me know. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.